Some projects are being worked on in complete secrecy. And we don't know much about it even after decades. Project Sign and Classic UFO Investigations Part 2 The project was established in 1948 by Air Force General Nathan Farragut Twining, head of the Air Technical Service Command, and was initially named Project Saucer. The goal of the project was to collect, evaluate, and distribute within the government all information relating to UFO sightings, on the premise that they might represent a national security concern. By this time, US intelligence had completed its analysis of German projects that were in existence during the war, and had found nothing that could account for UFO sightings, even with post-war continued development in the Soviet Union. At the same time, the Air Force determined that there was no aircraft construction material in existence at that time that could withstand the stresses resulting from the high speeds and the reported maneuvers of UFOs. In addition, even if the material could be found, the human body could not withstand the G-forces involved. In May 1949, Officers of Project Sign received a letter from an aeronautical company shareholder, who explained that the company had been building aircraft similar to the flying saucers, which were then a popular topic in the press. This was during the UFO craze following Kenneth Arnold's reports of seeing UFOs over Mount Rainier and the Roswell incident that followed. The Air Force had canvassed for reports of flying saucers, and the shareholder apparently felt that inventor Jonathan Edward Caldwell's disc rotor might explain them. Tracking down the leads, the team, accompanied by the Maryland police, visited an abandoned farm in Glen Burnie, Maryland, outside Baltimore, where the damaged remains of Caldwell's disc rotor aircraft were discovered. They also tracked down Driggers, who told them the story of the attempted flight in 1937. The team reported that the prototypes could not be responsible for the flying saucer reports that were being received from all around the country. Photographs of the broken disc rotor machine continue to appear in UFOs books to this day. They were often described as crashed flying saucers in earlier works, claiming it was one more example of the USAF being in possession of such vehicles. More recently they are normally connected with the claims that the Nazis had built working flying saucers late in the war, lumped together with other disc-shaped aircraft like the Avrakar, Arthur Sack AS-6 and Vought V-173, in an effort to demonstrate that such aircraft were both possible and well-researched. On December 30, 1947, Major General L. C. Craigie, Director of Research and Development, issued an order establishing Project Sign, aka Project Saucer, to collect, collate, evaluate and distribute to interested government agencies and contractors all information concerning sightings and phenomena in the atmosphere which can be construed to be of concern to the national security. There is reliable testimony that in August, 1948, the Technical Intelligence Division at Wright-Patterson and Project Sign, decided to make a formal estimate of the situation. The estimate was a top-secret document that contained unexplained sightings by pilots, scientists, and other reliable witnesses. The report concluded that UFOs were of extraterrestrial origin. The estimate of the situation was promptly rejected by Air Force Chief of Staff General Hoyt S. Vandenberg. It is said that he deleted the strongest parts of the original report, sent it back, and then, when he received the revised report, he rejected it on the grounds that there was not enough evidence to support the conclusions. Then, after rejecting it, he ordered all copies destroyed. Those inside Project Sign said that their morale and enthusiasm for the project declined sharply after this. Project Sign would soon have its name fittingly changed to Project Grudge. Project Sign's final report, published in early 1949, stated that while some UFOs appeared to represent actual aircraft there was not enough data to determine their origin. However, prior to this final report, Sign officially argued that UFOs were likely of extraterrestrial origin, and most of the project's personnel came to favor the extraterrestrial hypothesis before this opinion was rejected and Sign was dissolved and replaced with Project Grudge. Ruppelt wrote that Sign was given a two a priority, one being the highest priority an Air Force project could have. 
Though it was classified, restricted, Sign's existence was eventually known to the general public under the moniker, Project Saucer. However, UFO historian Wendy Connors claimed, through an interview with a surviving Sign secretary, that Project Saucer was the project's original informal name and had actually begun in late 1946. If this was the case, then the Army Air Force had already begun investigation of UFOs well before the Kenneth Arnold sighting that launched the first flood of UFO reports of June, July 1947 in the United States. There are other investigations followed the Mantell case. On the evening of the 18th of February 1948, an unusual light illuminated the skies over Norcata, Kansas. An accompanying shockwave broke windows, and area residents initially thought an airplane had exploded in flight. Sign did not formally investigate, but consulted with scientist Lincoln La Paz. The incident was probably an exceptionally bright bolide, said La Paz. But his explanation was provisional as no fragments were discovered and some eyewitnesses' testimony was inconsistent with a meteor. A turning point for Sign came with the Chile's witted UFO encounter over Montgomery, Alabama on 24 July 1948. In this case, two experienced airline pilots, both veterans of combat flying during WW2, reported that a rocket-shaped UFO, 100 feet, 30 meter, long and emitting reddish exhaust, approached them on a near-collision course. Chili's and Witted also reported the object appeared to show a double row of ports or windows emitting an intense bluish-white light. The reports of windows also suggested the object was possibly occupied. Additional corroboration came from four sources, a passenger on the plane who saw the object's exhaust trail as it sped from view, from an experienced military ground witness in Alabama, from a military pilot who reported an unusual light in the vicinity of Montgomery at roughly the time of the encounter, and from a sighting of a very similar object near The Hague, Netherlands on July 20. Moreover, the Chile's witted object also faintly echoed the mysterious Scandinavian ghost rockets of 1946, reports of which had intrigued American military officials. Ruppelt referred to the Project Grudge era as the Dark Ages of official Air Force UFO investigations. Still, by late 1949, some 20% of UFO sightings remained classified as unknown by Grudge. By late 1951, according to Ruppelt, some highly influential Pentagon generals had become so disenchanted with Grudge's debunking that Grudge itself was dismantled and replaced by Project Blue Book, with Ruppelt in charge. Historian David Michael Jacobs argues that, overall, Project Sign's personnel did an admirable job. However, Jacobs has also stated, Project Sign's main problem was that the staff was too inexperienced to discriminate between which sightings to investigate thoroughly. Because of unfamiliarity with the phenomenon, the staff spent inordinate amounts of time on sightings that were obviously aircraft, meteors or hoaxes.